The Socioeconomic Rights Accountability Project has asked Niger to return more than 1 billion naira in donations from Nigeria. Is this request in order? And the English Premier League is back. We'll talk sports this morning with a look also at the ongoing Commonwealth Wealth Games in Birmingham, the United Kingdom. And uh, G.D. Johnson joins us later for in-depth analysis of today's newspaper headlines in Off the Press. Very good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa right here um, on the channel 408 on the STV. And of course, 308 on Star Times. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Vegas. My name is Kofi Bartels. It's a beautiful Friday morning, and we're back with uh, interesting discussions, um, of course, analysis of the issues that are of importance to you um, this morning. And we usually would start off with a look at what's trending uh, in the social space. We have, of course, um, uh, the internet and the social media networks being a very active space with discussions on very important issues and we call it a top trending segment. Let's go there. Uh, the first one we have to look at happens to do with um, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission declaring a popular uh, Nigerian Instagram um, figure, all right, let's call it that, Momfa. He's probably known as Momfa, but his name is Ismaila Mustafa. Um, he's had an on and off, you know, relationship with the EFCC is always, you know, you know, being invited for questioning and all that. Um, so they have come up with a new one. This is the latest one. They are declaring Monfa wanted. And of course, they put out a tweet uh, yesterday. And this is what the tweet said. Um, it says anyone with useful information as to his whereabouts should contact the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, or the nearest police station. This is what EFCC said. Uh, it said, Momfa is wanted in an alleged case of retention of proceeds of criminal conduct, possession of documents containing false pretenses, false asset declaration, um, and laundering of proceeds of unlawful conduct, is what um, they are saying, of course. There were reactions to this on the social space. Uh, but let's do a background to this particular latest request by the EFCC. Now, in June, uh, a Lagos State Special Offenses Court uh, sitting in Ikeja had issued a, a bench warrant. Ikeja is a part of Lagos, uh, for those who are tuning in from other parts of Africa. Um, anyway, they issued a bench warrant for the arrest of Monfa, uh, and the judge issued the warrant following the continued failure of Momfa to present himself for trial. Now, you can see a picture of the gentleman there um, being, uh, you know, guided into court by an EFCC operative. Uh, he was arrested on January 10 by the EFCC and arraigned on January 12 alongside his company, is Malob Global Investment Limited on an eight-count charge of alleged uh, money laundering of six over six billion naira, and you can see some of his Instagram pictures there. I mean, he's a sort of a celebrity that um, I think he was rubbing shoulders with a uh, hush puppy in terms of flaunting his um, his wealth and celebrity lifestyle. You know, expensive lifestyle. Let's call it that on Instagram. Now. On January 18, this same individual was attend, admitted to bail uh, in the sum of 200 million naira with two sureties in like sum. Now, one of the sureties, a judge ordered, was on a property valued at 100 million naira within the jurisdiction of the court. The court also uh, had ordered that you know, the defendant return, to his, return his international passport uh, to the custody of the court while honoring his remand in any correctional center of his choice in Lagos, pending the perfection of the bail conditions. And um, he was able uh, to do that. 
And um, therefore, uh, I think about two months later, on March 28, uh, he was released to his lawyer, Boyega Oyeole, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, shortly after the court varied his bail uh, conditions. And of course, that was that. But um, the EFCC have now, have, to have now had to come out to say that this gentleman is wanted for the reasons the earlier put out. And um, of course, uh, it's got uh, a lot of Nigerians talking and you know, tongues have been uh, wagging. But Monfa has come out in his defense also to reply the EFCC um, by uh, saying that um, he didn't steal or launder money. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He didn't steal or launder money. So he's uh, absorbing himself. Uh, he went to, I mean, I'm sure there's no surprise that he chose uh, his verified Instagram page. That's where he went. Uh, and he went there to declare that um, he could not be declared wanted by the EFCC as he has neither stolen money nor gotten involved in money laundering. That's what he's saying. All right. Uh, this is what he put up. And I quote, after my arrest and arraignment on the first case at the Federal High Court in Lagos, on the 10th of December 2021, the court gave me judgment and ordered EFCC to release my wrist watches and other valuables in their custody to me uh, for being unlawfully seized. He went on to write, being a bitter agency, he calls the EFCC a bitter agency, the EFCC in dissatisfaction with the judgment of the court on the release of my wrist watches came up with another trumped up charge against me, he says. Mofa continued to write by writing on, on, on Instagram. On the 10th of January 2022, while I was at their office at a court table to receive or retrieve my wristwatches in compliance with the judgment of the court, and immediately after collecting my wristwatches, they held me down at their office and charged me to court the following day on, on the frivolous charges, he says. I was arraigned before a familiar judge to the EFCC, and in effect, I was given a very difficult bail to meet, as a result of which... I ended up spending over two months in prison custody while making efforts to meet the difficult bill. After several attempts to meet the bail conditions failed, I successfully applied for the bail conditions to be reduced, which eventually led to my release, he wrote. Upon my release, I traveled outside Nigeria to check on the welfare and well-being of my family and returned to Nigeria shortly only for the EFCC's corrupt lawyer. He uses the word corrupt lawyer, not our words. I wrote to me Oyedepo. Uh, rather than focus on establishing the, his criminal case against me, uh, along with the EFCC operative uh, Keina Garba, he chose to capitalize on the fact that I traveled, had traveled to blackmail me into entering a plea bargain. He says, else, he would inform the judge I traveled uh, and ensured my bail is revoked, therefore making me have no choice but to dance to his tune. So he's alleging blackmail here. He says, I initially refused, but after so much blackmail and intimidation by uh, Rotimi Oyedepo, I succumbed and was told to pay 142 million naira to the EFCC. Note that he has admitted that he, he, he broke his bail conditions. So he said they uh, made him or asked him to pay 142 million naira uh, to the EFCC as compensation and also signed for a one year imprisonment sentence. Uh, I was uncomfortable, and they thereafter reduced it to 40 million naira and one year imprisonment. When it became obvious to the EFCC or to the EFCC that I wasn't going to sign the plea bargain and to play their game, they informed the judge that I traveled. So he's saying, despite uh, his breaking the bail conditions, meaning that you give us your passport, you can't travel out. He found his way out of the country. He said he went to attend or uh, to look check on his family that he came back to Nigeria and the EFCC knew what had happened and uh, they found out and they decided to ask him to pay some money so to keep it away from the judge. Um, so he says it is blackmail. He said it's blackmail, but if you ask it, it might say it's, it's a plea bargain. Uh, so he says that um, the judge, without any concrete evidence or dis and disregard uh, of the fact that I was never absent in court, revoked my bail, but fortunately the judge again released me 
on temporary basis and I was asked to appear in court a week after. So he's, he goes on and on and on. It's, it's a long one that he wrote on, um, on Instagram. Um, if we want to go into it all, we would not take the next story. So it's a, it, it, you get a sense of what his response is, which is um, he is saying that he's innocent and the EFCC is merely uh, trying to, uh, to frame him up. Uh, it, it's, it's a case that, of course, is sure to garner a lot of attention as uh, Monfa is quite popular on Instagram uh, with his lavish lifestyle. I think the difference between him and uh, his fellow Instagram celebrity uh, uh, who shows and floats an expensive lifestyle, Hush Puppy, uh, is that Monfa has um, not been convicted and also has, uh, over the years, chosen to return to Nigeria uh, to face any, any allegations. So we'll see how this goes. Another one that caught attention uh, is the uh, Aquabum State uh, High Court sitting in New York um, ruling on the uh, murder case of the young woman, the job seeker, whose uh, um, disappearance you know, went viral on Twitter. Uh, me and family were asking for her and on Facebook also. You know, everyone was worried about her whereabouts because um, she you know, put out information that she was in trouble and nobody could find her. Um, Inyobongo Moron is her name. Uh, I think one of the investigative journalists from Nigeria who is also very active on social media, David Hundwini, uh, spearheaded uh, some, some, some you know, efforts to get information out regarding this girl. And indeed, um, you know, he was trending yesterday, people giving him credit for the fact that uh, uh, information was put together uh, to enable the authorities uh, arrest Uruak Akban, who um, is said to have been behind in Yobong's disappearance. Well, the case has been in court, and uh, the Akwaibom State High Court, sitting in the uh, state capital yesterday, sentenced Uruak Akban, this 21 year old, uh, to death by hanging for uh, the murder of Inyabong Morin, the job seeker uh, from Akwaibom State. The court also found the accused guilty of rape and accordingly sentenced him to life imprisonment for having carnal knowledge of the deceased whom he lured to his father's house in Uran local government area of Aquabum State on April 2021, in April 2021, under the pretext of giving her a job. Uh, so this, this judgment uh, lasted for two hours. The delivery of the judgment lasted for two hours. Uh, yesterday, uh, the trial judge, Justice Basi Nkanang, uh, discharged and acquitted the convict's father, Frank Akpan, uh, and his sister, Anwan Basi, this, uh, the second and third defendant in this case, who were accused of uh, being accessories to murder after the fact, uh, to murder, respectively. Um, so, now, this is what the court said, the judge said. That this court has proved beyond reasonable doubt that you, Udwakakpan, is guilty of murder and you are charged accordingly. You are to die by hanging until you rot away. Those were the words of the judge. Um, however, you know, this uh, is, it wasn't without drama. And, of course, uh, it also got people talking. There wasn't, uh, there was confusion in the court as the, the gentleman, the young man, the 21-year-old young man, uh, after his uh, conviction uh, uh, um, uh, attempted to escape from court after the sentence was announced by the trial judge, he attempted to run away. Uh, the convict came out of the dock and immediately grabbed the lawyer by the neck before the security operative swooped on him, grabbed him and beat him merciless, mercilessly, uh, causing a stare uh, in the court. Uh, so that's that lot of people on social media expressing satisfaction, you know, that this uh, case has run its course and that justice uh, has been served uh, to, to this young man. You can see him being dragged away uh, from the court. Let's just uh, listen and uh, watch a bit of what happened there. Take your camera. My girl, will you get up from my face? Will you get up from my face? Go! 
It's, uh, it was a really you know, dramatic scenes at the uh, judiciary, the court premises there in Aquabum State, and you can see this gentleman, the young man, uh, being dragged, uh, being dragged uh, from court into that uh, waiting uh, vehicle. The case was really uh, followed. In fact, uh, the search for Inu Moran was really, really hot and active on Twitter with a lot of people asking for help, you know, for whereabouts, looking at the last message she, she shared online, you know, and trying to get clues, information coming out that she's going for a job. And she also put out information, uh, a distress information on Twitter. This helped uh, people to know what was going on. Uh, and, of course, the investigation and the search yielded some results with uh, the arrest of this young man. I think uh, this is one of the cases that has received swift judgment uh, it's not always usual. It's not always usual. Let's quickly uh, take one last one. Um, social media was also uh, responding, you know, to the the uh, appointments by the two major political parties in Nigeria. The All Progressives Congress announced and appointed Governor Simon Lalong of uh, Plateau State as the Director General of the um, APC Presidential Campaign Organization. Um, appointing Festus Kayamo as a spokesman. <clears throat> a lot of, um, a number of appointments were made. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, before these appointments, you had um, uh, Comrade Adam Sushimule, a former governor of uh, Edo State, uh, being referred to as a DG of the uh, Bola Metinbu APC presidential campaign organization. It seems there's been some reshuffling, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, why people were talking a lot about uh, Lalong is because he's a Christian. Uh, from northern Nigeria, and some feel that this may be a way the party is trying to, you know, sell themselves to Christians around Nigeria, especially in the north, following the same faith ticket uh, of the APC. Now, the People's Democratic Party's uh, presidential candidate, Atiku Abokar, also made some appointments, uh, pointing uh, to uh, notable and vocal Nigerians, uh, Nigerians of vocal and political issues. One is a professional politician, Dino Melai. Um, when I say professional politician, I think I mean that he's uh, been in politics a long time and has held positions in the uh, legislature. So Dino Melai, uh, who decamped from the APC to the PDP uh, some years ago, has been appointed as a spokesman for the Atiku presidential campaign. Also, uh, uh, Daniel Boala uh, is sought to serve alongside Dino as a spokesman of Atiku. Daniel Boala is uh, very vocal on social media and on uh, electronic media as well. Uh, and he has been known as an APC, a staunch APC supporter. And so uh, it was surprising to many uh, that Daniel Boala was appointed to speak on behalf of Atiku during the presidential campaigns. But uh, Daniel Boala last month decamped from, he withdrew his membership of the All Progressives Congress, citing the same faith ticket uh, of the party. All right, we have to go. Um, up next, uh, J.D. Johnson joins us as we uh, flip through the pages of the National Daily's analysis of the headlines.